Hello and welcome to day number 39 of our travel trailer series and today I want to talk to you about something that is called non-farm payrolls or NFP. So what's the non-farm payroll? Basically we're talking about the jobs created in the United States outside of the farming sector that's the non-farm payroll and on the first friday i think in the month they are coming out and uh, people go all crazy over it because we typically see a high volatility in it and the stock market is moving a lot and that's what's attracting a lot of uh, gamblers and a lot of people that want to make some money with these data coming out so it's usually about a forecast let's say where are 200,000 jobs that ought to be created in the outside of the farming sector and then the question is the actual numbers so the numbers that get posted then are they higher or are they lower than the forecast and it is usually said that if the numbers are higher stock market will go up if the numbers are lower than expected stock market will go down so that's the myth surrounding it and you can already tell i'm not the biggest fan of non-farm payrolls for several reasons and uh, let's go to a, through a typical um, day trader day non-farm payrolls coming out so day trader joe jumps into the market and he's all keen about it he read everything about the latest forecast and whatsoever and he now thinks uh, for some reason uh, i don't know something he saw in the coffee mo in the morning or whatever uh, that the markets will go up. So he waits uh, 8.30 a.m. New York time, that's when they are coming out. So actually an hour before the market starts. So uh, that's when he is in front of his computer and he is all ready and he wants to see the movements in the stock market and then he puts in a position and he wants to go long. And uh, so going long means when the market goes up, he will make money. So he jumps into the market, market rapidly moves a little bit up and down at the very beginning, then it goes up and up and up and up, and he's like, yeah, damn, that's $200, that's $300, that's $400. And then what happens all of a sudden, boom, and then everything goes down, and he's like, oh, damn, that's 100 points lost, so now I'm 500 in the minus, 600, 800, 1,000, oh my God, oh my God, and now either one of two things happen. First of all, if he was a smarter one, he had in a protective stop loss order, but as the volatility is so high, he got stopped out with a loss. Or if he's not smart, he will start to panic at one point, then click the button, close the position with a loss of, let's say, $1,000, and then he will realize five minutes later, oh no, the market went up again, and then he thinks, oh, I was right, next time, next month, when I come back, I'll do the same again, but then, I'm not going out of it and then he loses money again and again but now day trader Joe has a full month to recover so he can start saving come back next month and lose his money again that's typically how it works and the reason is that uh, there's a huge volatility inside uh, these uh, couple of minutes usually depending on uh, action is going on for let's say something between 10 and 15 minutes usually and it's uh, the same in the uh, indices so dow jones s p 500 nasdaq and uh, also in uh, currencies that are having the us dollar in it so euro us dollar for example british pound us dollar so these things kind of move quite big and that's when people see okay uh, i can make some money because of these big movements problem is that sometimes day trader joe gets lucky so he it goes up and he manages to make some money and then he feels great so usually that leads to him coming back next month doubling his risk losing it all again and uh, then get lucky again and then do it continuously over and over so far most people that are engaged in it are pretty much uh, i don't know anyone that says hey i constantly make money in, in a nfps or i make money overall in the nfps one of the reasons is because we have some big players in the market that can move it because the market is still actually closed and if you have a few hundred million you can bet it against someone you can take all the stop losses out and collect the money from everyone and then just close your positions again goes up so you basically got the money of day trader joe jim jake and whatever their names are and uh, that's a great thing 
one of the rules uh, that I learned back in the days is that the first movement in NFTs usually is the uh, wrong move, but even with that, so if it starts to go up, you can pretty much uh, think that it will go down again. And even if you trade that, so that's uh, barely doesn't work because they kind of behave a little bit irrational. And one of the things that uh, the day traders don't know because they never really dig into these things is that uh, with the non-farm payrolls, you actually can guess whether they are better than the estimate or not. If you have a forecast of 200,000 uh, uh, for next month's numbers, that forecast doesn't change. So um, all these analysts that are doing these forecasts, that's, uh, th there's no, no change in it over the period of a month. However, we have something that we call the Department of Labor in the United States, and they, for example, give out weekly numbers for jobless claims. So if you lose your job and you go on uh, some benefits, the, you will be registered with the Department of Labor. Department of Labor will give out a number uh, where the uh, number of jobless claims is either going up or down. And then you already can have a good guess whether that number will be uh, better or worse. So professional traders or traders that are educated actually, uh, they pretty well know uh, beforehand whether they will be good or bad and they don't participate in the non-farm payroll game. They get in earlier as they already know what the basic outcome will be. So they don't participate in these 15 minutes. They just go in and uh, reap uh, the harvest because they already knew before the numbers came out with a big likelihood whether they will be better than the market or not and uh, that's the huge difference between people that are uneducated that just jump in there and want to make a quick buck so be very very careful it's a uh, very famous uh, people if you go to uh, broker they usually send you some free webinars uh, where they invite you to watch the uh, non-farm payroll movements and you sign in and you look at it and they will show you the volatility and uh, afterwards they will always have a great reason why the stock market went up or down so you just see some rapid movement and in hindsight when they tell you yeah uh, numbers were better stock market went up uh, then it looks like magic, although even if you know it before, if you're not prepared for that volatility, uh, you pretty much get stopped out because you either can stand the pressure of uh, being down like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 US dollars, especially if you have a small uh, portfolio and uh, the other way as well. So be very, very careful. If I were you, I would avoid it. I usually do. Uh, sometimes I just uh, watch it in Muesli and see um, what happens uh, because I'm in longer term positions. So I want to be aware of the non-farm payrolls when they come out because I need to have a wider stop loss because of that uh, volatility. And uh, afterwards, uh, the market works like normal again. So I want to be aware of it so I don't get accidentally stopped out in a trade where I wanted to be in for another week, but I don't participate in that uh, up and down. And if I were you, I wouldn't do so either because it's very, very stressful. You can imagine if you are up 500 and you're like, should I take it, should I take it? And then you're up 800 and then you're like, yeah, good, I didn't take it. And the moment you want to press the button, then you're all out of a sudden 500 negative and uh, then you hope it goes up and somewhere down in the drain you close it. Um, very, very stressful. Most people from a psychological standpoint are not able to cope with it. And uh, another thing is it happens once, once a month. So you cannot get used to these things. Uh, if you could trade it like every day, uh, you might develop uh, some sense for it and uh, could actually be able to make money out of it. But it comes once a month and professionals already know what's happening in advance. And uh, it's uh, very uh, dangerous because the swings can be very, very big. If you wanna watch it, that's fine, but you shouldn't participate in it. But be aware of it because volatility can be quite high. And if the volatility is high, you want to adjust your stop losses 
in a way that you don't get accidentally stopped out in a position uh, that you intended to hold longer. So first Friday of the month, 8.30 uh, a.m. New York time, which is uh, 2.30 uh, Central European time, that's when these numbers come out, be aware of them and uh, don't try and make some money out of it. It usually doesn't work and uh, the, well, probably not the biggest loss, but the biggest loss that I heard uh, someone having because sometimes people think I am right, I must be right because of whatever was a loss of 18,000 euro in 15 minutes. So uh, make you, uh, do yourself a favor and don't be part of it. And it's very, very tempting because uh, you get all these free webinars and that free education and you probably will have people telling you how easy it is to make money in these non-farm payrolls. Um, always question if they're actually really doing that or if they are just trying to sell you something. If they are a broker, they make money anyway in terms of commission. As long as you do trade from a broker's perspective, everything is fine. And we will talk about brokers and how they work uh, in one of our other weekend webinars. So they always have an incentive to tell you, hey, look, there's easy money. All you have to do is be right and go into the markets and trade. As long as you trade, they earn money. So why wouldn't they tell you and offer you all that free education that probably is exactly worth of the, well, what they are taking uh, for, so zero. Um, as I said, I can't warn strongly enough of it because I know a lot of people that lost a lot of money out of it and uh, I barely know anyone that's not a real professional trader um, that really made money out of it or maybe I just know the wrong people but uh, I guess I know a good many traders so uh, chances are that you are losing out of it. Well that's it for today thank you very much for watching and uh, tomorrow we will talk a little bit more about how to detect the trend and uh, what tools we can use. If you remember, we have upwards trends, higher highs, higher lows, and downwards trends, lower, low, lower lows and lower highs. And we will get a tool that uh, shows us a little bit easier than that we actually have to spot it, whether the trend is going up or down. So maybe you find this helpful. If you're used to it, if you're used to read the market, uh, you don't need it, that's why I don't use it. But uh, if you are at, at the beginning, just starting out, you might find it helpful. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I wish you a great evening, um, a great weekend, and we see each other again tomorrow. Goodbye.